It's been about 70 days now since I started, or since I posted the last video on propagating strawberries in a hydroponic system. And here is what thing, here are what things look like 70 days in. So I think I have about 35 plants right now and all came from four large plants. So here's one, here's one of the large plants with the string. Here's one right here. Um, and then I have a really big one over here that's doing really well. And you can see I am getting lots of berries. So everywhere you see kind of a white flower, that's where the strawberries are starting. Um, this one's really been strange. I get some weird strawberries that look like that um, coming in here. So they're, they're pretty big, but they're oddly shaped. And then some of these runners here have also um, produce some berries and th those ones actually look pretty good here's another one up here and so yeah so i've learned a couple things i'd like to share a few things i've learned about um propagating strawberries here so let's go through that i've learned several things about propagating strawberries in a system like this over these first couple months. Um, the first lesson I learned is that with any of these runners here, you, you, ha you have to leave the runner attached to the newly propagated um, plant until its roots get really well established. Um, if you cut the runner, I've tried, I've tested it out. You cut the runner um, and you keep it watered, it, it'll die in the system um, pretty quickly. So that's one lesson. Um, don't cut the runner if you can avoid it. Lesson number, lesson number two. Uh, the way these net cups hang in the system, they don't get down to the nutrient film layer um, because they're only a couple inches and the water kind of runs below. So um, to keep the roots wet, um, you really have to keep watering them. And I, I end up using a measuring cup that I take and I just pour um, into each one of these net cups to kind of keep the rock wool moist so they stay alive. Um, one thing I did that helps me out though is before I start my runners, I take the rock wool here um, and I can split it in half like this, just kind of break it open. You take a string and you, uh, Hopefully you, get, you can get some like wicking string. Um, don't get nylon stuff that has like this, the plastic inside. Um, this stuff doesn't work very well. If you can get like real cotton um, ro wicking rope, go for it. There's a lot of fake stuff out there on Amazon and I've, I've got some that doesn't work. It's called wicking rope, but it's not. It's actually just like nylon stuff. Um, so it doesn't do very well. It, it still gets the job done, but if I, I'm going to get some real cotton wicking stuff um, for the future. But here's what you do. You kind of take the rope through the bottom of your net cup and you put it inside of your rock wool and you squeeze it together and you sort of smash it in there. And then when you have your runner, you place it in here and you put, you put your foam piece on top here. Um, just like we, I showed in a previous video. And this, um, and by leaving the runner connected to the, uh, to the, uh, the new plant, you, your plants do pretty well that way. So you don't really need to add a lot of supplemental water. I still kind of come through every, um, once every day, I'll just come and pour a little bit on to keep the rock wool wet. But I have noticed I went away for a few days and um, didn't water them. The ones that had the ropes like this, the wicking rope, stayed green and stayed looking like they were doing well. The ones that didn't have the rope that weren't touching down into the water, even with the runner still attached, looked a lot worse, um, in worse condition. So uh, I would highly recommend doing this in a system like this. Now, you might also consider a different way to propagate strawberries than in this NFT system. You could do like a tank where they're resting in the tank water um, and you have like a mist or um, a pump that's bubbling up water 
to, that's soaking the bottom of the net cup so you can help the roots grow down. So that's, that's something important to keep in mind. Uh, otherwise, you, you have to do a lot of watering and it's, uh, you know, it takes a lot of your effort to keep these things uh, wet. So one other thing I've noticed, the, so you can see some of these, this is a string system I have here. And I, I've noticed that the root systems in these uh, strawberries take a while to actually really develop to the point that they get down far to the water. So I think what I'm gonna try is maybe a different method where I put them in a Tupperware container tank to get the roots to um, grow uh, straight down. Cause they kind of come out all sides of this rock wall here. I mean, they're still alive and this one has the rope. So the rope stays wet, which is nice and, and keeps it up in the rock wall. But just something to keep in mind that I don't know if this is the best way to really get the root systems established. Um, I would take out the big one to show you the roots, but it's a little too big right now. This, they're huge. Um, and I'm also going to take these, some of these propagated plants here and transplant them out into some pots to see how they do out there. Uh, now that we're getting, we're almost, uh, we're midway into April here, so we'll, we'll be in May soon. I can start putting some stuff outside. I'll see how these things do transferring them into the soil. And I think they'll do pretty well because they have this rock wool to kind of keep everything together. I'm just going to put it right in, right in some dirt and see how it works. Another thing I noticed that once these things start flowering, they, they tend to stop shooting out runners. Um, and I'm at the point now where I don't really have any, any new runners to even pick from to propagate. So that's something interesting I've noted is, is they, they, they tend to just stop shooting out runners when they are uh, making berries. So something to keep in mind that maybe you won't get a lot of runners if you have berry, uh, berries on your plants. I'm hoping they come back because I really wanted to fill up this whole system here. So I've got a lot of room left. I'm still left less than half capacity here. Um, another item of note is pH makes a huge difference. So the, these kind of leaves right here, um, they have a lot of spots and things like that. I, I noticed that was much more um, prevalent on the plants when I had the pH too high. So something to keep in mind. And you should get like real nice green leaves like this. Um, and when I adjusted the pH down more um, and getting that five, five to six range, they really start doing well. Um, so yeah, all of the established plants that have the big root systems, they're doing really well in this system. The other ones up here, the runners, they're doing pretty well, but it's been a challenge to try to keep them uh, watered and uh, get the root systems developed. So it has been a challenge. It's been, it's been working though. And I would say I spend maybe five minutes each day on these things. Usually before I go to bed, I just come down and make sure everything gets a little bit of water. Um, and ever since I started that rope uh, method, it, it really, really works well. The next thing is to try these strawberries. Okay, so here's my taste tester. We got our first strawberry right here. He's gonna be the first one to take a taste of it. Can you, can you take a bite out of the end of it, buddy? Tell me what you think. I'm gonna take this off. Are you gonna take that green part off? I can't take this down. Okay, just bite off the end. See how it tastes. Ooh. What do you think? Gula. Is it good? Gula. <laughs> Is that a thumbs up approval? Mm hmm. Gula. What? It's kind of sour. <laughs> it's kind of sour. All right, well, they're kind of sour. So I, I think we need an adult to try this out. I think that first taste test wasn't a resounding success. So it was a little bit, uh, not as sweet as what you would expect from a supermarket. So a little bit just uh, more sour, I would guess. Still good, still fine. I'm gonna try another one of these. I think it might just be because it's also a little runner that produced a berry. It was basically one berry. So 
Um, maybe they're just not as sweet when they're on the younger plants. I'm gonna try one of these other ones. This one's not quite all like super red right now, so it may not be that sweet. This one's much better. They're they're like a very I don't know, the consistency is kind of like a squishy uh <laughs> you know they seem a little bit like juicier than a normal strawberry. Um, and this one's much better than that other one. So I don't know, I don't know if the other plant had something different about it. But once the big established plants that are like the second year or maybe third year plants that I have um, that I bought uh, to propagate all these things, once I get a berry off one of those, I'll, I'll taste test it too and and see if it makes any difference. But these are pretty good so far on these little ones. Um, so hopefully I get a lot more berries and I'll come out with another video. Thanks for watching.